Hey everyone, you are listening to brettbender.connector. I hope all of you are well. Today we are going to be discussing uh, the possible future timeline that we are marching into, um, and that is a timeline where we will be establishing a Christian Marcionite monarchy in America. Uh, I know what that sounds like. I know that's going to sound far-fetched to a lot of people, but look at the difference between the fall of the Soviet Union and where Russia is at today, where they went from communist to having a right-wing strongman who brought back Christianity to their country. And there's a lot of parallels between America and the Soviet Union, where if you look at the fall of the Soviet Union, it came after a period of nihilism where people no longer believed in the system. We are at that stage in America. Nobody believes in this American dream anymore. We don't have a unified culture. It is a culture of just disconnected nihilism, very similar to the Soviets. And if you recall back in the 1980s, people thought that the Soviet Union would just last forever, that that would just simply be a political reality. But it fell, and it went from communism to having a strongman dictator and a right-wing country based upon Christianity which is what a lot of real blooded Christian Americans want in this country. And more importantly, it's what the third worlders want. Not more importantly, but that's a big aspect here. And those are the ones getting flooded into our country. And what I'm going to be talking about is how we can sort of judo chop this event into our favor. So let's look at something that was recently tweeted by Colonel Douglas McGregor. He said, at least 17,500 migrants have crossed the border in the past 36 hours. The majority will be processed and let into the country with a court date. This must stop now. We must deploy troops to the southern border. The time for change is now. This was retweeted by him, I meant to say. But still, the elite is purposely flooding our country with third worlders. And they're doing this to weaponize them against us, the heritage Americans. However, we can turn this around and weaponize the third world against the elite. The countries that a lot of these people are coming from, from Africa to Latin America, they don't live, they don't really mesh with democracy, which is what our country is starting to mold into. It's at least that's what the current regime is trying to turn us into is a democracy. You know, everything is a threat to our democracy. Just listen to their uh, dialectic. And these people... They thrive under dictatorship. They thrive under monarchies. Look at what they tried to implement in Iraq. They tried to install a democracy in Iraq. And anyone who knew an iota about Iraqi culture knew that that was going to fail. But we have people like Victoria Nuland in charge of the State Department. And these people, they seem to not operate on logic. They seem to operate on emotion. And they're obsessed with this idea that they're going to spread democracy throughout the entire world. I know that's a pipe dream. I would hope a lot of you also understand that is a total pipe dream. It's not going to work. So what I'm trying to say is these people are primed for the next stage in America's development where we make this country into a more of a monarchical, aristocratic structure. Because that's the only way you can keep these people in line. I mean, look what happened after Iraq with Saddam Hussein. You can divvy out some judgment on him. But at least the guy kept his country together. Same thing goes for Gaddafi. The system loves to hem and haw about how Gaddafi was so mean. But Gaddafi kept his country in line, not just in line. Libya was prospering. It was one of the most developed countries in Africa before the UN took him out. And now it's total anarchy and chaos. Completely, they failed to establish democracy. So, yeah, these are the type of people that are more salt to the earth. They understand, like, the basic natural order of things. And this, this is the stuff that, you know, your average New England libtard doesn't really quite understand. They're up in the clouds with Victoria Newland and the Kaganites. So, oh, this is a, a nice, some nice architecture near where I live. This was an old bank, actually, that they turned into a grocery store. I just wanted to show you guys this. I thought it, it was really pretty in there. So the right and the left, they're trapped. And even the right wing is they're trapped in their own echo chamber where they're not even arguing about things that are based in reality. Like, should we give minorities easier access to voting rights? Like, what are you talking about? Do you think minorities are like brain dead? You just show up to a voting booth with your ID and say, okay, let me vote. That's the end of story. It's not complicated. Anyone can do it. The left is the real racist for thinking they can't figure it out. I'm not even saying that. We're so trapped in this stupid dialectic when the real argument is, why are women voting? The real argument, why are people voting? Should we even give people access to voting? 
that's actually the right wing. It's not this current right wing where Rob Smith, some gay guy, shows up as an ambassador to CPAC for the conservative convention. It's not right wing. They're, the right wing in this country keeps operating in the paradigm of the left, saying we're not the real racists. Dude, racism isn't even what they tell you. 99.99% of the people that they'll call racists are people that don't even hate other races. They just have love for their own race and they want to be left alone and they want their own communities with their race. That's, that's all it is. So what I'm saying is we've allowed the left to define what morality is for two generations. It's been too long. And that's why everything is so nutty in the current culture, because it's a very confusing time for morality. So what I'm saying is a third world pretty much already understands this. A third world is totally on board with like, yeah, that's a good point. Why are women voting? The third world are like, yeah, I understand that a lot of people don't vote. That makes sense to me. Like they get these ideas. It's these, it's these people with these luxury beliefs in our country who don't understand these fundamental things. It's like the horseshoe theory of practical intelligence, where the people with the lowest IQ and the people with the highest IQ, they're on the same page, but then it's the midwits in the middle that are like, we need to protect our democracy, because that's all they hear. They're really good listeners and they're really good followers and copiers, the midwits, but the visionaries are at the high end of the bell curve, and then the people that are salt to the earth are on the other end, and they're like, yeah, these visionaries, they just, we love one another. That's what I'm saying is like, the visionaries and the third worlders we need to team up. Like, these people are not our enemy. We actually get along with them better than the midwits. Even though, don't get me wrong, we're still going to kick the third worlders out of the country once we take power. But in the meantime, we need to work with them. And I mean the illegal third worlders and the unproductive ones will kick out. Because if you look at a graph of the demographics of America and who gives a net positive amount of money to the system through taxes... The only two categories are whites and Asians. Blacks and Hispanics are a drastic, like in total, net negative on the system. So what us white people need to do is we need to copy what the blacks and the Hispanics are doing. We just need to stop. I might regret saying this. We need to just stop paying taxes if you're white in America. Because, I mean, the system, they want you to be violent. They want you to go out there and shoot people because then it'll go into their narrative. Like, look at how dangerous they are. We need, the, we need to up the security measures to keep everyone safe and take away your freedoms against these bad guys. That's feeding their narrative. They want you to be violent. What they're actually afraid of is white people not paying taxes anymore. So maybe not like don't don't just stop paying taxes, maybe figure out a way to pay less in taxes, figure that out, because we need to stop giving this regime legitimacy because they, they don't have it anymore, because no one in the government represents us, the people, especially the white people in America. So if there's no one in our government that represents us, then if we're to continue to pay taxes to them, then that's basically us bowing down to them and admitting we're a slave you see what i mean like I w i've showed that one article from the oxford journal it was titled making aristocracy work and the key to any new power structure arising is the people looking at it as is the people viewing the power structure as valid and legitimate the current society we live in now is not valid it's not legitimate they don't represent us anymore so we need we need to remind ourselves we're the ones in power and we need to stop giving them resources that's we're the we're the really the problem here, not the system. The system is doing what it would predictably do if it's a totally docile population that doesn't stick up for itself. And I really don't think that they have the apparatus to go after people who are making like under three hundred thousand dollars a year for taxes anyway. Because, I mean, look at the IRS. It's just it's an extension of the government and the government's a mess and it's diversity hires and all woke and stuff. Biden tried to scare people by saying, I'm going to hire a whole bunch of new IRS agents. And that never actually happened. That was all just like him, like putting up his chest, like, oh, we're coming after you. We're going to get you if you don't pay taxes. It's all smoke and mirrors. They got nothing. It's falling apart. And I learned that actually dealing with the IRS just this year. It takes forever to get a hold of anybody. There were all these small businesses that came up after COVID that they can't really handle. And it's like, why pay money to the system that hates you? Why pay money to the system that is working behind the scenes to genocide your people? The elite are purposely flooding our nation with the third world to replace the heritage Americans. And, you know, on one hand, they say it's because... Well, you guys aren't having enough babies. It's like we can handle a lower white population. What we can't handle is being replaced by a populace 
that has no experience living and working and operating a civilized society. And these third worlders, they're helping big business too, because you remember there was a time a few years ago where you know Taco Bell was paying like $19 an hour to work for them, and people were like, whoa, this is pretty cool. And then suddenly we see the crisis at the border and more and more keep even flowing in, and then Taco Bell's wages go down. Because they're like, oh, now there's more people in here in the country that we can pay lower wages to. Because let's think of a scenario where they cut off the border, they kicked out the third worlders, it would just be the heritage Americans left, and all these big businesses would, businesses would be competing. Taco Bell would probably have to pay people like $50,000 a year for you to work with them. And it would be great. It would be awesome because they can't afford that. Don't get me wrong. Don't think like, oh, Taco Bell can't afford to pay people 30 k a year. They absolutely can. They just choose not to. And if we didn't have all these illegal immigrants coming in, you'd be getting 50 k a year working your call center job because they would have to. They would have to do that, these big businesses, in order to stay competitive. They would have no choice. And there would, there would be like no needs anymore because the main thing is people that refuse to get a job. The number one thing they say is it's not that I'm even like inherently lazy. It's like, why would I get up out of bed and work a job for $14 an hour? They're like, I might as well just like sit at home all day. That's what they all say across the board. So if you pay people a living wage, we will have a productive society again. And the reason that they don't do that is because they lazily just flood this country with people from the third world. So all these like socialists and lefties that are like, yeah, this is great that the Africans and Mexicans are coming across the border, yippee. It's like, and then they'll turn around and be like, these businesses need to pay a fair wage. And it's like, you guys are schizophrenic. You guys are bipolar. These people don't understand what's going on in this nation. And none of them have the balls to say the things that I do anyways. You think they would ever get show their face on a webcam and say, we need to get together and stop paying taxes? Fuck no. This is a revolution. We need radicals. That's the only way we're going to turn things around. Because this is society right now. Most of the human population be like, this is totally fine. You can't change my mind. And it's just fire everywhere. Like people are saying, oh man, I wonder when society is going to collapse. It kind of already has. In these major cities like New York City and San Francisco, they don't even like arrest people for stealing things anymore, or they just let them out right away. It is kind of anarchical out there. And these refugees coming in, they don't want to live in this gay multicultural society. They want to live in the America that they saw in Hollywood in the 80s. These people are Christian coming over. They're primed to join us, the Christian nationalists, in creating this vision. Because one, they're used to dictatorships. And two, they want to be in a Christian nation. They don't want to go to a gay pride parade and look at a pup show. They want to go to mass. And I've said this in other videos where everything the elite throw at us is blowing up in their faces in the most hilarious ways. And this is one of them. And as white people become the minority in this country, they will become aware of their whiteness and their racial consciousness is already exploding. Because people in because white people in America, especially the older generation, they thought they were invincible. They thought that they had the white privilege. Like, yeah, we got white privilege. Nothing can touch us. You know what? You know what, black person? You can sit next to me. One black person, you can sit right here. And now all of a sudden they're becoming a minority in their own country. Asians and Jewish people make more money than them. And they're like, what's happening? Like, they're, they go outside. The park is just like 98% black people. And now they're starting to develop this racial consciousness they never had before when they thought that they were just these untouchable kings of white privilege. That, that meant nothing to them. And now they're like, oh, I'm like Germanic. I'm Celtic. And they're getting, we're getting genocided in, our own, in the nation of our ancestors. And this Christian monarchy that we'll be developing, it's going to have natural hierarchies. And naturally, the white population in general is going to be at the top, not because white people are superior to anybody, but because we've been here longer, we have a stronger foundation, and we like building complex systems and societies and Western civilization. And it's just fair because we've been here longer and these people who just came in, they just got here. So they would understand it too. Like, oh yeah, obviously, you know, the white people are going to be towards the top and not them. That's like landing on an alien colony as a human and be like, I'm just as alien as you are, okay? It's ridiculous. It's fair. And this needs to be a Christian nation because Christianity is a universalist religion. The, and because it's just true. The issue with other religions like Islam and Judaism, especially Judaism, is it's a religion of racial superiority where 
as a Gentile, you can convert to Judaism, but you'll never be seen as one of them because you don't have the ethnic blood. Just ask my girlfriend, who was the only Gentile at an all-Jewish high school in Orange, and they bullied her horribly. Like, I don't even want to tell you the stories. And a lot of the girls there, they had nose jobs by the time they were in middle school in order to blend into the population. And they were all super rich, and she wasn't. They bullied her for her money, for her blood, for her German last name. Not to say that bullying doesn't happen everywhere. It does. But it gives you an idea. They're very tribal people. So we can't have the elite in our country be a tribal people. We need Christians. We need a universalist religion to remind us that, yeah, there's hierarchies here, but we're all on the same team as a nation. Because I'm telling you, the third world and democracy go together like oil and water. It doesn't mix. It doesn't work. So these elite, they want to replace, they want to replace the industrial white heritage population with someone from Guyana who's never experienced what it's like to live in the modern world. Are you kidding me? Like what? And people say that the elite, you know, they're at least really smart. They're not smart. You know, I guess the argument can be made. They don't care about the future and they just want to make the bag right now. That that's an argument you can make, but you can't say that they're smart with long-term thinking. I mean, just look at Minnesota. What was it? It was either Minneapolis. I think it was Minneapolis or Minnesota. They changed their flag or Minneapolis. Yeah. Changed its flag to represent the Somalia flag because it's uh, has a high Somalian population. Like the people who come in here from the third world, like Somalia, they don't just adopt the culture here. They bring their own culture, which sucks. But at least one good thing is they come from a culture where they understand the utility of having a strong man as a leader. They understand the utility of Christianity, which is something that the current that the current population just doesn't. And that's why they're going to be replaced. So they think they're going to be replacing, oh, the right wing conservatives. No, the right wing conservatives are about to rule this new America and the third worlders are going to be the lower caste. It's going to look like early Rhodesia, basically, because that's what always happens when you have a minority white population with a bunch of people from the third world is it's a minority white hierarchy. We're there at the top. That's what always happens. So that's kind of giving you a better idea of what this future Christian monarchy of America and hopefully Europe is going to look like. Where, yes, there's a lot of non-white people in the country, but they need leadership. They need guidance. They don't need some nebulous, globalist, internationalist idea where we're all the same in a nebulous melting pot. There is no good or bad. Everyone wants direction. And I heard someone else say this too, that... Everyone loves the America of Tony Stark, just an arrogant, cocky, narcissistic white guy who's really good at things. And no one can even be mad at him. Nobody even cares that they're white. They just, they love that guy. It's such main character energy. And that's who, what everyone wants to follow. That's what makes us, that's what makes like our Western civilization work is having guys like that's, those are the guys who built this country. Those are the guys who built Europe. And those are the guys that create the best civilizations that everyone wants to hang out in. That used to be the face of America. Now the face of America is a black woman who's really disappointed in you for not being politically correct. It's not even shade on the black queens. It's like they've turned you into a ridiculous caricature is what I'm saying. Because, yeah, it's becoming abundantly clear that in the next 10 to 20 years, America is heading towards a calamity. I'm not the only one to say this. Other people have said this directly. And that is going to be our opportunity to change the Soviet Union into a right-wing Christian monarchy. Because, I mean, the, even the current election coming up, it's not even an election. It's, it's a Cold War. I'm not saying that it's going to get violent, per se. Who, who knows? But, I mean, they, in Colorado, said that Trump can't even be on the ballot. And it's them trying to interpret the Constitution. But, really, it's not about, like, it's not law that dictates what happens. It's the institutions, and it's the military, and it's them deciding who's the one actually in power. It really is like we're, we're in a knife fight for the system right now already. And the battle is over who do the people see as legitimate. And one thing we can do to take down this current regime is to spread the word that you're no longer going to participate in it. We need to hit them where it hurts. And that's their pocketbooks. They love blood. They love death and violence, the system. What it hates is losing money. It hates not being able to suck our life force from us. But no matter what happens, remember, Christ is king. See you next time.